welcome to the No Zone. This is the place where we have lots of fun while we learn. I'm Fiona. And I am Shooty Bobo. You can call me Bobo. And I'm Celestine, and you can call me Celo. Thank you all for joining us today. <clears throat> now, we have an action packed show for you today. Firstly, I want to tell you about our very own drama series, Study Buddies. Then, secondly, there is hot number, Cool Words. Therefore, I think you all agree with me that when something is... What is, is the matter with you, Bobo? <laughs> Bobo, you sound like you're giving a speech. Yeah, but I, I am giving a speech, so let me finish. Okay, carry on, Bobo. And so, in conclusion, I would like to suggest that you all watch the No Zone because it is going to be great. And I well, think... Well, you heard, Bobo. Let's all move out to the chill out zone. Hello, everyone. Hello. Have you got a big hello for everyone at home? Hello. Well, thank you all so much. <clears throat> I would like to announce that today's topic is all about communication skills. Uh-huh. Now I know why. That's why he's behaving in a very weird manner. I think he's practicing giving a speech. Of course, Zelo. Now, can you please tell us what today's buzzwords are? Debate. Agree. Oppose. Conclusion. Thank you. Now, did you write down the buzzwords? Listen for them throughout today's show. Now, Bobo, would you like to introduce our drama? Do you think you can handle that? Of course I can. I am very clever. <clears throat> It is with great pleasure that I am delighted to introduce for your enjoyment our very own drama, Study Buddies. And I, well, was that okay? <laughs> well, I think we're ready now for Study Buddies. So who's excited about today's debate session as I am? Oh, wait, was that today? JC, what are you talking about? You were meant to prepare our group's conclusion. <laughs> I don't like your silly games. Well, you shouldn't have seen your face. I always come prepared. Hey, is everything all right? You are unusually quiet. It's my brother, Patrick. What's going on? He's been really mean to me since last week. It's not your fault he got himself punished for buying alcohol. I know, it's just... Well, if he didn't, the study monkeys, what did he call us? Our study group is going to finish you all today at the debate. That's some kind of talk from a repeat student. JC! What? It's true. But you don't have to be mean about it. Diana! Now see what you've done. See, your study group is already breaking off and I haven't even yet started. I'm not afraid of you. Well, I'll be waiting to see what you've got. Come on, Joseph. I am really sorry. Do you think I'm happy when everyone calls my brother a repeat student? I don't care if he's a criminal or whatever. He's still my brother. I agree. I just... I'm sorry I got angry. Whatever. Well, we have a debate to win, so let's concentrate on that. What was I supposed to do? Sometimes it's better to keep quiet than argue. I agree. That was a little mean. Mina than Patrick calls monkeys? Why does everyone give him a free pass? You see, I'm going to go to class. I want you all to be seated in your groups. This is our ticket to winning today's debate. It's the hands debate now. And as all say, it was a group argument, boys. We didn't need it. I'm telling you, we are going to finish them today. Patrick? Yes, sir. Can you stop gossiping and start the motion? But, sir, I'm in the op opposing team. You oppose books are better than television? Yes, sir. I'm not surprised. Who are today's proposing team? That will be us, teacher. Then the floor is yours. Are books better than television? Well, after our argument, I'm sure you'll be convinced to know that books are indeed superior and a necessary source of information than television. What's happening? Why? My debate book, it's cold. 
I don't believe this. It had all the points we worked on together. And don't forget with television, one can access information easily through the use of audiovisual aids, such as memorable, funny cartoons or drama skits. And so with those few remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to agree with our team in that television is indeed more superior to outdated books. Very well done, Pat. That was a very convincing argument. Study Group B, are you ready to counter that? Books are far much better than television because... I'm, I'm sorry, teacher. I don't have my book. What do you mean? In the morning, I had a book with all my group's points within it, but now... Can't you recite the argument from memory? No. Okay, try and find your book. You may sit down. We are winning this. You should give it back. And risk losing. No, we won't lose. You gave a good argument. Forget it. This is our turn to have revenge on everything they've done to us. Just look at them. Pathetic losers. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there is no any other argument, the opposing team wins the motion. And as agreed, the losers will... Wash the toilets! Good job, Patrick. I want you to keep up. Now, let's all take a break. This is so unfair. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. I told you I'd make you really sorry. <gasps> My book! Patrick, you were behind this. Well, you shouldn't have reported me. But what you did was wrong. And you think it's better having problems with Dad? You and your friends started this war, so deal with the consequences. I don't believe this. Patrick stole your book? <sighs> what am I going to do? The only thing we can do is report him to. No! Don't you see, JC? This will only cause us more problems. Diane, I know Patrick is your brother, but if he really cares about you, he wouldn't have called us monkeys or made us lose the debate. I mean, what else is next? I don't know, JC, but this is the last time you'll do anything like this to me again. Well, what a great episode. Did you all enjoy it? Yes! I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, it was most agreeable. Well, that's good, Bobo, but did you hear any of today's buzzwords? Yes! Excellent. How many buzzwords did you hear? Now it's time to head to the learning zone where. Well, we... <clears throat> Allow me. It is time to join our dear friend, Teacher Flora, as we enjoy another trip to the amazing learning zone in an effort to improve our mathematical skills and find out bobo, if we. Bobo, bobo. Oh. You're taking too long. It's time for Hot Numbers. Hello, everyone. Hello, Tisha Flora. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Now, today, we're talking about shapes, but not any kind of shapes. We're looking at solid shapes. On the table, we have some different prisms. Who can tell me what a prism is? <coughs> yes, Bobo? Well, a prism is a solid shape which has a uniform cross-section and it, all its surfaces are flat. Very good. And prisms are named according to the shape of the uniform cross-section. I'm going to hold up some examples and I want you to identify the shape. Which one is this one? Yes, Isaac? This has a square as a cross-section and we call this a cube. It has six surfaces, all of which are squares. Very good. Now, what is the shape of the cross-section for this one? Yes, Audrey? A rectangle. That's right. And we call this a cuboid, and the cross-section can either be a square or a rectangle. And what shape is this one? Yes, Mugabo? A triangle. We call this a triangular-based prism. Yes, it is. And it has five surfaces and is made up of two triangles and three rectangles.
Now, what shape is this one? Yes, Isaac? A pentagon. So this is a pentagonial-based prism. You are right. It has seven surfaces, two pentagons and five rectangles. And finally, what shape is this cross-section? Oh, um... Yes, Bobo? Well, that has six sides. So it's a hexagon. So it is a hexagonal-based prism. That is right. It has eight surfaces, two hexagons and six rectangles. Very good work, everyone. Now, to calculate the surface area, we have to open out the solid into its different surfaces. This is called a net. For example, here is what a cube looks like. We can see that it is made up of six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if one square measures four centimeters by four centimeters, the square's area is? Yes, Isaac? 16 centimeters squared. And we know that a cube is made up of six squares. So the cube's surface area is? Yes, Audrey? Six by 16 centimeters squared is 96 centimeters squared. Excellent. Let's look at this triangular base prism. So we can see it's made up of three rectangles. One, two, three. And two triangles. One, two. Now, if the rectangle measures 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters, each rectangle has a surface area of? Yes, Mugawa? 150 centimeters squared. Very good. And if each triangle measures 10 centimeters by 8 centimeters, each triangle has a surface area of what? Um, well, yes, so Bobo. that is um, a half multiplied by 10 multiplied by 8, which gives us 40. So each triangle is 40 centimeters squared. Very good. So we have three rectangles of 150 centimeters squared and two triangles of 24 centimeters squared. So we add that all this together. Will you do that for us, Bobo? Oh, yes. Now, three rectangles at 150 each gives us uh, 450. Two triangles at 40 each gives us uh, 80. So 450 plus 80 gives us 530. So the total surface area is 530 centimeters squared. Excellent. Now, to calculate the volume of a solid, we use the formula of cross-section area multiplied by the length. For example, we have a cube. The cross-section area is, yes, Isaac? 10 times 10 is 100 centimeters squared. Excellent. So we multiply this by 10, which gives us, yes, Audrey? 100 multiplied by 10 is 1,000. That's right. So the volume is 1,000 cubic centimeters. Remember, when we talk about volume, we work in cubic centimeters or centimeters with a little three at the end. Let's look at our triangular prism again. So we know that the height and the width of the cross-section is eight by 10, which gives us a surface area of, yes, Mugabo? A half times eight times 10 is 40 centimeters squared. Spot on. And if the length is 15 centimeters, this means the volume is, um, yes, Bobo? So that is 40 multiplied by 15 which is 600. So the volume of this triangular-based prism is 600 centimeters cubed. Excellent work, everyone. So we've learned to calculate the surface area and volume of solid shapes. Oh, wait, now, Teacher Flora, how do we measure the surface area of a hexagonal-based prism? That's a very good question. So let's remind ourselves of the net. So the rectangles are very easy to calculate. And with the hexagon, this is what we do. We divide them into triangles. So we work out the area for the rectangles. 
and then the area of the triangles, and then add them together, which gives us the surface area of the cross-section. Wow, thank you very much, Teacher Flora. You're very welcome, Bobo. Well, after all that hard work, I think we need to take a short break, but we'll be back soon with a big three and so much more. So do not go anywhere. Welcome back to the No Zone. Today's topic is communication skills. Thank you very much, Celo. Now, please, would you be kind enough to remind us what the buzzwords are? Debate. Agree. Oppose. Conclusion. Thank you. Now, Bobo, you do realize that good communication isn't about being too formal, but talking in a clear and concise manner so that people can understand. But really? Yeah, it's true, Bobo. Well, in that case, it's time to put our studio guests to the test as we see whether their math skills add up. Uh, w w was that okay? Excellent, Bobo. It's time for the big three. Big three. Now, in this game, it's all about numbers. Three contestants, three questions, ten seconds. Whoever gets the most right wins these great textbooks. That's right. And if the scores are tied at the end, we move into a tiebreaker question. And remember, you only get to hear the question once. And you must write down your answers within the ten seconds given or your answers will not count even if it is correct. Are the rules clear? Yes. yes! Make sure you play along at home. Now, Bobo, uh, is the timer ready? The timer is always ready. Okay, let's go to the first question. If I buy a bike for 10,000 francs and sell it for 15,800 francs, how much profit will I make? And your time starts now. And time is up, time is up, time is up. Pants down, everyone, pants down. Okay, question number two. Question number two goes like, what is five squared, add 10, and then divide by five? Time starts now. And time is up. Time, time is Pants up. Pants down, everyone. Okay, now question number three. What is negative seven times six plus negative three? And time starts now. And time is up. Pants down, everyone. Now let's see how everyone did. Kenny, reveal to us your answer for question number one. And for question number one, Kelly's answer is 5,800. Nice. And next up is Kazadi. Show us your answer for question number one. And Kazadi's answer is 15,600. Although I think the six looks a bit... Um... <laughs> next, next, next up is Kelly. Ne Kelly, show us your answer for question number one. And Kelly's answer is 5,000. Oh, thank you very much. Next. <laughs> okay, question number one was like, if I buy a bike for 10,000 francs and sell it at 15,800 francs, how much profit will I make? So this is the right answer. I bought it at 10,000 francs, sold it at 15,800. So my profit is... 5,800. And that means Kenny got the first answer correct. Next up, Kenny, show us your answer for question number two. 
And for question number two, Kelly's answer is 30. Mm -hmm. And Kazadi, what's your answer for question number two? And Kazadi has 10 for an answer. Kelly, what is your answer for question number two? And that is 25. Question number two was like, what is five squared? Add 10 and then divide by five. So five squared is five times five, which gives us 25. And then when you add this 25 to 10, it gives us 35. Yes, and when you get 35 divide by five, the answer is seven. Well, not to worry everyone, you did not get the second answer correct, but still up, you have to show us your answer for question number three. Kenny, show us your answer for question number three. And Kenny's answer for question number three is 28. Uh-huh. Kazadi. <laughs> and Kazadi's answer is positive 28. Okay, next up is Kelly. She has your answer for question number three. And, oh, I think he ran out of time there, but she was working it out. Okay, let's see who was correct. Question number three was like, what is negative seven times six plus negative three? Okay, negative seven times six gives us negative 42. So negative 40, 42 plus negative three, it gives us negative 45. Wow, and that means today's big three winner is Kenny. Yay! Yay! All right, congratulations Kenny and all of you for working so hard. And as we all know, this is the no zone. No one goes home empty handed. You each get a storybook thanks to our friends are the Longhorn Publishers. Wow, Sela, that really was a hot game. <laughs> You're right, Fiona. It certainly is sizzling. So let's cool down with cool words. Cool words. Cool, cool words. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello teacher, teacher Flora. Flora. I'd like us to think of all the words and phrases that we might use in a debate. Let's go. Yes, Kelia? Firstly. Very good. We use that to introduce our first point. Next. Yes, Kazadi? In conclusion. Excellent. We use in conclusion to introduce our summing up of what we're saying. Next. Yes, Kenny? Therefore. Great. We use therefore to introduce a sentence that relates to the sentence before it. For example, it was rainy, therefore we had to stay inside. Next one. Uh, however. Another good one. We use however when we're making a point that could be opposite to our previous point. For example, it was rainy, however, we still managed to go out and play. Next one. Yes, Kelia? I disagree. Nice. If we don't agree with something somebody says, we would say, I disagree. Next. Yes, Kazadi? In addition. Super. If we were making a further point, we would use in addition. Next one. Yes, Kenny? Secondly. Great. To introduce a second point. Any more? Oh, yeah. Actually. Great. We'd use actually when we're saying something we know to be true. For example, we thought we wouldn't be able to play in the rain, but actually we did. Well done, everyone. I hope that was fun and you got some ideas of phrases you can use in your discussions. Now, let's take a look at the board. First of all, I'd like us to come up with a word that starts with one of these words. Any, every, no, and some. Yes, Kelia? Anybody. Very good. Yes, Kazadi? Everyone. Excellent. Yes, Kenny? Nowhere. Great. Bobo? Oh, something. Well done, everyone. Now, these words that you formed using the words on the board are pronouns, which means we can use them instead of nouns. Furthermore, they tell us something about the number of things involved. Well, uh, Teacher Flora, just how does that work? Well, if we look at these words on the board, we can see how many things are being referred to. For example, every means all. Oh, I see. Like everything, 
everyone, everywhere. Exactly right. Whereas no refers to, yes, Kelia? Nothing or none. That's right. Those two are very straightforward, but any and some are a bit trickier. We use some when we are talking about a non-specific number of things. For example, there were some pupils in the classroom. We use some in positive statements when we're sure that something exists. Teacher Flora, I'm not sure I understand. Don't worry. Maybe if we look at any, it will become clearer. If some refers to items in the positive, what do you think any refers to? Yes, Kazadi? Negative things. That's exactly right. Like some, any is used to describe a non-specific amount, but we're not sure. For example, think of the question, is anybody there? Wait, so it sort of means at least or a little bit. That's right. So we tend to use any in questions or negative statements. Can somebody try and think of a sentence that uses both some and any? Yes, Kenny? I wanted some food, but there wasn't any left. That's excellent. And the pronouns that you came up with are used in exactly the same way. For example, I wanted some food is positive, so we use some, whereas, but there wasn't any left is negative, which is why we use any. Does everyone understand? Yes. yes. Very good. Why don't you practice making sentences with pronouns beginning with every, some, any or no at home. After all that hard work, it's time to sit back and relax with another animated tale. That is right, it is story time. Welcome to the African Tales, and this is the story of the scandal rats. One day, smart-looking Shema was sent to throw a big pile of rubbish waste. He tugged and pulled the bag to the back of their garden all the while, knowing that the work he did would one day make him very, very strong. Finally, he arrived and, using all his might, hauled the rubbish bag into the ditch. It was then that he saw a funny-looking animal tiptoeing about in their garbage pit. It had a little wrong muzzle that sniffed along the filth and a hairless tail which stood out sharp like a carpentry nail. Shema took a step closer, but as soon as he did, the animal quickly dug and burrowed a deep little hole. And in a matter of seconds, it was out of sight. Alarmed, Shema took to his legs and ran back home where he immediately began to tell his father of what he had seen. It, it, he started to say, and the tail, and it was brown. He patted and puffed out loud. Oh, calm down, his father said, and slowly began to describe to me one of the things you've just seen. Shema took a breath and began to tell him, his father listened and in the long run said, son, the animal that you were talking about is nothing but a scandal rat. Scandal? Shema wondered. His father then sat him down and told him a tale of a long time ago when the world was just but a brand new plan. Now, in those days, dinosaurs and fire-breathing dragons roamed the earth. And though they were the biggest and mightiest creatures ever seen, they lacked one gift that only rats claim. What? Shema asked. His father leaned in and whispered, good communication skills. But Shema raised an eyebrow then asked, how is that special? Son, when you can communicate well enough, that means you can reason, understand, judge, and discern all matters big and small. And just as in those days, the rats would meet in parliament grounds to argue and debate on the many ways everyone could make the world a better place. 
So good were they that no other animal saw the use in partaking as proposers or opposers of any set motion. In fact, the animals trusted the rat's abilities to reason so much so that they granted them full power to rule over the entire world. But as the years went by, things began to change as the rural rats mischievously misused their power for their own selfish gains. Now, in the marketplace, rats openly disagreed over the need to pay for any of the goods they had taken and soon enforced a law that made only them exempt from paying taxes. Now, as things began taking a turn for the worse, the animals held a meeting where they discussed the need to stop their rules from making their lives miserable. As soon as it was agreed, the animals marched up to their leaders' grounds and asked, why is it just the rats are the richest? Benefiting in all lands, while we seem to suffer at your hands. Well, said one cunning rat, give us just one reason why you lot should have the fine things that we possess. The animals looked at one another, silent and glum, fearful that they had no words to fight back. But little Gahiji, the weaver bird, stood up and shouted, because we are all equal, and demand that you trust us as such, especially since we elected you to make life better and for all animals in the world. Yes, the others called back, striking terror into the rats' hearts, and the more she spoke, the more the others became convinced that their ruler rats would no longer be their kings. In the end, the wild animals reclaimed back their power, going to never again sit back while others spoke for them, for it brought with it such a harmful rule. The rats lived with the other animals in peaceful harmony, with all the animals equal and able to speak. But the rats never quite lost their reputation as squadrons for having abused their power of communication. Shema's father then looked at him and said, in conclusion, son, I hope you've learned that you must know how to speak out for yourself. Otherwise, you could someday become someone's slave. So when his father left for work that day, Shema decided that he would join the school debate team the next day. And that is the end of the story of the squandrel. Well, those rats were scary. Did you enjoy yourselves? Yes! And I have learned a lot about communication skills. Ah, uh, really? Yes. In conclusion, it has been a very informative show. Well, thank you for your help today and thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us next time for more fun and learning on the Nozone. Come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.